Curiosities, curiosities, I have here a bag of Ardusian crystals, fresh from Ardusia. Yours for about five gold. You want... Okay, how about the tooth of Garush? Garush the great ogre, he was defeated by the great here. Why are you walking away? These are great curiosities. They are big conversation starters. You put this on the, the table in your tavern and people will say, Oh, look, it is the tooth of Gurgur. Gurgur. It's a big tooth. Look. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Campaign Creator Series. My name is Guy and we are of course sponsored by World Anvil, worldanvil.com, that wonderful aggregator of worlds, that creative space that allows you to keep track of your campaign and your characters and so much more. You can even roll dice now inside of that, or you have been able to do for a long time, but now you can get together and just, it's just a really, really powerful resource if you are into world creation and the like. Now, part of our journey in terms of the Campaign Creator series is the fact that you should already be running your campaign. You should have launched it a while ago if you've been following along with the progression of these videos. We're getting to the point now where we're refining, we're building, and we're adding on because the campaign that you're running now, the world that you've created, the space that you've created, is starting to come to life. And we're going to now add bits and pieces. We looked at a bit of history last week. We're looking at it this week. We're looking at curiosities. Now, curiosity, whether it's a tooth of a famous ogre or crystals from a long lost moon of a different planet, curiosities give us the, uh, the option as game masters, as dungeon masters, as narrators, as storytellers, they give us the option of adding in something that's a little bit unique, something that's a little bit different, and something that only the player character has. Do not underestimate the value of giving the player characters these unique things. Now, we're not talking magic items. Magic items are all very good and well, and I think, or I see, sometimes get treated as basically just stat modifiers or character modifiers. Oh, well, I've got this flaming sword that allows me to fly. It's just a modifier. There's no inherent value in the object as far as the player is concerned and as far as the PC expresses that value. They're often seen as tools. Curiosities, on the other hand, are things that do things differently and which may give your character something to really latch onto, but it gives you as the game master a really powerful tool to make something interesting, which I think is one of the goals of being a game master. So we're going to look at how do we define a curiosity? What's its value? What's its value? Not monetary. And the warning that comes with it. So we're going to look at that. And of course, if you stay until the very end of the video, there's some bonus material there too. So let's delve right into it. Let's define curiosity. Curiosity is an unusual relic. I mean, that goes without saying, but it has little value. So it's not an artifact. It's not the head of a lich that could be used in a giant necromantic resurrection spell. It is a relic. So Oh, in this vial, I've got the tip of the finger of the handmaid of the saint of Demetri. That has no value to anyone. It really shouldn't have any value. The value comes in, well, next section. So we're going to come back to this. So it's an unusual relic. It could be anything. It could be a dagger that's the size of a thumb. It could be a marble that seems to show the entire world within it floating gently in amongst a liquid sea. It's a minor trinket, a brooch, a tassel, a tassel, I should say. It's just a little something. So it's not big. We have to constrain ourselves. It's not big. Even this tooth, for example, it must be blunt for a reason. It has no 
value. It can't be used as a weapon. The player shouldn't be able to use it as something that they can climb a mountain with or take over a kingdom with. It should simply be an adornment, a trinket, a trifle. And there's a reason for that, and that's because it gives it more value by not having any value. Because the value doesn't lie in its financial worth or in its power. And I think that's the important thing here, is curiosities have no power. Except for the power, the value that the character instills in it. And the character is going to instill value into it if you instill value into it. So when the character finds an oddity, a badge of some kind, uh, it has no value. Oh, I'll give you five copper for it. The NPCs will provide value. So if your NPCs are saying, oh, I'll give you a thousand gold pieces for it, the players are going to assume it's worth 10,000 gold pieces and will never part with it. But it's a value item. It's not something that the players' characters are going to cherish aside from its monetary value. If it's a case of, yeah, that's just a regular old tooth, isn't it? I'll give you three copper. Maybe I could you know work on it a little bit cut something nice out of that but no no more than that if the npcs have no value for it but the pc when they hold it if you get the pc to seed something or to tell you a story it becomes personally valuable so in other words the character finds a strange shaped tooth for example it doesn't seem to have very much value to it but when you hold it reminds you of something what player does it remind your character of get the player to describe oh it reminds it reminds me of holding of holding mm, a spoon a spoon or a, a something yes it's a spoon it's a spoon that i had as a child it reminds me of that that's what this that's what this tooth reminds me of by getting the player to do that to, to express a reason what it reminds them of, it starts to instill in them a sense that this is something that their character might cherish. Now, further to that, pursuant to that, when the character then takes the tooth out and the NPC says, oh yeah, I'll, I'll give you five copper for it. That is a dismissive. And you're not going anywhere. You're not seeding anything with it. You're not making it personal. And you're not driving the narrative with it. You are devaluing it, which is good. Have that NPC say, but you know what? My brother, he's a silversmith. He could put that on a chain for you. Might be a nice little keepsake. You know, reminder of your exploits finding this tooth. Drive the value of the object to the PCs however you can. Seed it. Give it narrative value. If the goblin is clutching onto it and they prize it from the goblin's hands it's a worthless tooth but there was an experience behind that or perhaps there's a goblin lying dying it looks up at the paladin and before the paladin can deliver their final blow it holds up its hand and in its hand is this manky tooth and it says please keep it warm at night i don't want it to suffer it would be a pretty cold player who didn't have their character look at this tooth and go, what? I don't understand. And then they don't have much value in it other than when they drive it forward and you give it personal value. So the value comes in from what you invest from your NPCs into it. Bear that in mind. Now, the warning with this stuff is use them sparingly. If everything suddenly becomes a memory of a thing, everything is seeded, every goblin holds up every little piece of pottery and says, oh, keep your precious, it has no value. Remember, the value is instilled by the NPCs and by the PC taking ownership of it. They're going to need to take ownership of so many things before they start losing track of, well, this is my prized precious spoon. This is my prized precious fork. This is my prized precious cake fork it gets a bit much after a while so use it sparingly make sure that there is no material value the moment there's material value goodbye it's gone they've sold it money wins out most of the time most of the time good players it won't work so much but most of the time it will win out and so by 
removing that material value. It can't be used as a component. It can't be used as if it doesn't give you any statistical bonuses. You need to treasure this if you want to treasure it because you want to treasure it, not because of any other reason. So limit the use. Don't have lots of them coming out. If it's a tooth, can I use it to cut something with? No, it's too blunt. It's too blunt. Could I stab someone with it? Yeah, for half a point of damage. I mean, okay, maybe one point of damage. I suppose this could be pretty vicious. But yeah, I mean, that's that's about it. So you don't give them out very often. When you do give them out, make sure that they have no value aside from the value that you invest into it from a narrative perspective and then limit their use. So it's a marble, sure, but no one will trip on this marble because it's so shiny everyone sees it. Or it's just one marble. You can't trip on one marble. Not easily. Anyway, you might be able to cause one person to be distracted slightly if they stepped on it and they're wearing soft-soled shoes or they're barefoot. Yes, then you possibly could. Yes, you could strangle a very small bird by, you know, making it eat them. I mean, whatever. I mean, uh, limited use, limited use. So those are my thoughts primarily on curiosities. They add such a wonderful thing because we can use them then as dungeon masters, as game masters, to control stuff. So if that trinket gets stolen, or if they, oh, that's got no value, and then they finally meet someone who goes, oh, that tooth, that will complete my collection. Please, I must buy it from you. I will give you whatever you desire. And then that person steals it when the players refuse to hand it over or the players hand it over. And then that person says, well, in exchange, all I can offer you is this. And they give them a scrap of a, a map for a new location or for some buried treasure or something. I, I'm not brave enough to go on this, but you might be able to, you know, give them a reward that is tangible and that's usable and that has value if they're going to go that, that, that route. So you have the option then to take and control stuff. So that leads us to the bonus stuff. So listen to your PCs. When, they, when you describe uh, the goblin is clutching this strange tooth, listen to the PCs. If they go, oh, it's a tooth. Uh, okay, I put it in my backpack. If they're not interested, don't bother. But if they say, okay, well, what does the tooth look like? There's curiosity there. The player is trying to figure out, is this monetary value? What is this thing? Then you can start to develop it a little bit more. So listen to the PCs. When they get the thing and they're like, well, this tooth doesn't have... Oh, I put it on as a necklace. I'll do that. I've often had players where they've taken curiosities, they've taken things that don't seem to have much value, and they've instilled a narrative value in them. Make a note of that stuff. Because later on, when an NPC says, well, what a ravishing necklace. Wherever did you get it? I'll give you five gold for it. It's lovely. It's very unique, very native. If you do that sort of thing, suddenly there's value. Again, purely narrative value. Yes, in this case there's coins, but that's not the point. You as the game master have paid attention to what they as the player has have done. They as a player start to go, well, what I did was, was valuable. It gave us a moment and it can lead us to stuff. So give them more detail if they start to inquire. Well, you can see there's ancient grooves in this, which possibly would have delivered poison or some such um the closest related species is the drake so now you know if the drake if you encounter a drake there is a venom that it could be delivering or however you want to play it but give it more detail and remember to make sure that your npcs react appropriately i have mentioned that already oh i want that necklace i want that object i want that trinket or i don't want it it has no value to me they must react to it though if they don't why did the character bother noticing it in the first place so trinkets can be very very useful in terms of giving us stuff to play with with regards to our player characters until next time i wish you and yours the happiest of campaign creation